So now we need to look at the other part of carbohydrates. And here we're not looking at the alcohol group, we're looking at the carbonyl group. And there are two types of carbonyl groups that we'll encounter in carbohydrates. And that's the aldehydes and the ketones. So we're just going into this in a little bit more depth than we did in the previous um, video. So remember, for an aldehyde we have to have at least one hydrogen. So one of these two positions must be a hydrogen. They can both be hydrogen, but one of them must be. When we have a ketone, we see that we have to have two R groups, and R just means some chain of carbon. So we'd have to have a carbon in both of these positions. There may be a long chain of carbons or a short chain of carbons, it doesn't matter, but we have to have a carbon in this position. And this group is called a carbonyl group. So carbonyl isn't actually a functional group. Carbonyl is a structural feature, and it is part of other functional groups. So it's either, if it's a carbonyl, depending on where it is, the functional group is actually an aldehyde or a ketone. We also see carbonyl groups in our carboxylic acid. So carbonyl is not itself a functional group. It's the aldehyde or ketone that is the functional group. Carbonyl is just a structural feature. So what's the difference between these? Well, we know that we have to have at least one hydrogen attached for an aldehyde. And so when we look at the molecular structure of this, we see that we have our carbon with our double bonded oxygen here, and we have it attached to a hydrogen. And in this case, it's attached to a CH3 group. But one thing that's clear, and we talked about this earlier, is in an aldehyde that the carbonyl has to be on the terminal carbon. It has to be at the end of the chain. Otherwise, it would have two carbon groups attached because we're not going to have a, um, we're only going to have two bonds other than that carbonyl bond in these molecules because it only takes four bonds and two of them are taken up to the bond to oxygen. Now for a ketone, it's just the opposite. We can never have a ketone where the carbonyl group is on either of the terminal carbons. It has to be on a carbon somewhere in the middle. Now for a ketone, we can see that it can happen at any number of carbons for a longer chain. This we're dealing with just three carbons, so there's really only one place for this carbon to go, or this carbonyl group to be, which is on this middle carbon, because if it were on either the first carbon or the third carbon, then we'd be dealing with an aldehyde group. So the position of the carbon, or the carbonyl group, excuse me, determines whether or not we are have an aldehyde or a ketone. So here's some examples of some aldehyde molecules, and we're going to look at also some of the naming conventions that we see. And so here we have methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol. The prefix is still, the meth, eth, propan, but still tell us about the number of carbons. Notice that we do not need a number in front of this because it's an aldehyde group. It must be at the end of the chain. It must be a terminal atom. Therefore, it must always be at carbon 1. No matter how long the chain is, we're always going to start counting where the aldehyde group is. So therefore, it's always going to be at carbon 1. So we don't need names in there. And what we see here at the bottom, we have the IUPAC name, which is what we've been talking about is the official naming rules. And what we notice here is at the end of the names, we see this AL ending. And when we see AL as opposed to the OL that we saw for alcohol, that AL ending tells us we're talking about an aldehyde. Now we'll also see some common names used for these. I'm not worried about you knowing these common names. I just want to put them out there so if you see them in a problem, you're kind of familiar with them. So formaldehyde is the same as methanol. Acetaldehyde is ethanol and so on. So these are kind of some common names that we'll see. Now, I'm not going to give you a structure and ask you to name that this is ethanol, but if I give you this name, you should be able to match it up with the molecule. For example, if I look at propanol, I know I have to have a chain of three carbons. I know that it's an aldehyde, so I know I have a carbonyl group. And because it's an aldehyde, I know that that carbonyl group has to be on one of the terminal atoms. So this is the only possible molecule that would match that propanol name. So again, not about naming them, but being able to interpret parts of the name to match them up with the appropriate structure. So we see aldehydes all around us. We see formaldehyde, which is used as a preservative. Uh, we also see benzaldehyde was actually in cherries. And so there's lots of different aldehydes that are in lots of different substances, um, and we see them all around us. And we'll talk about um, using these in carbohydrates and what difference it makes when we start talking about structural features as well as kind of how these molecules are used in the body. So now looking at ketones, so we said, well, the ketones has a carbonyl group just like an aldehyde, the difference being that we have bonds to two different carbon groups from the carbonyl carbon.
So what we see is that this part is called the carbonyl group. This is the carbonyl carbon. So I have my two groups attached to my carbonyl carbon. And one thing I notice about the name, I have a ketone here. When I have a IUPAC named compound or any um, ketone molecule, I see that it has the ending O-N-E on it. And so that's what we're going to look for to identify something as a ketone. Now acetone is actually a um, a common name, and we see acetone a lot. This is one of the most common ingredients found in nail polish removers is acetone. And so this O-N-E tells us we're dealing with a ketone. This is a common name. We'll talk about some of the IUPAC names in just a minute. So that lovely buttery smell that we see in popcorn, well that comes from butane dione. Um, this is kind of a unique molecule because it actually has two ketones in here. That's why we have the DI in front of the O-N-E. But the thing that I want you to notice is that we have the O-N-E ending and that indicates that we have a ketone in the molecule. The dye just tells us we have two ketones. The but part, the B-U-T, tells us that we're dealing with one, two, three, four carbon atoms in this molecule. But that's why we get that lovely buttery scent from our, our popcorn. So here's another example problem. Go ahead and pause so you can take a few seconds to actually answer this question, thinking about whether this contains an aldehyde or ketone, both or neither. So hopefully you pause that and you've looked at it. Now we know that it contains either an aldehyde or a ketone because what we look at is the presence of this carbonyl group. Now we don't actually see the carbons because we're dealing with a skeletal structure, but we can draw those carbon atoms in. And so what I have is I find my carbonyl group here. I'm going to circle that in blue. So that's my carbonyl group. And so what I have to decide is, is this an aldehyde or is this a ketone? Because it only has the carbonyl group. Remember, if it's something like carboxylic acid or an amide, then it has the carbonyl group plus some other structural feature. So we know we're dealing with an aldehyde or a ketone. And what I'm going to look at is I'm going to find my carbonyl carbon, so the carbon that is part of that carbonyl group, look at the carbonyl carbon and see what's attached to it. And what I see is that it has a carbon attached here and a carbon attached there. So I have a carbonyl carbon with two carbons attached to it. So I'm going to see that this is in fact a ketone. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter that this chain goes all the way around and they're kind of part of this same group. All we're looking at is bonds to carbon from this carbonyl carbon. And once I see that, I see two bonds to carbon. It's irrelevant whether these are connected. If there was a, no connection here and we had two chains, it would still be a ketone. The fact that this is in a ring does not make a difference between being an aldehyde or a ketone. We can't actually have a ring with an aldehyde directly attached because we never have a terminal atom in our ring. They're all basically in the middle of the chain. So with a ring, if the carbonyl group is directly attached, is kind of part of the ring structure, we cannot have a, an aldehyde. If we wanted an aldehyde with a ring, say we had a pentane ring, what we'd actually have to have is something that looks like this. Notice that the um, carbonyl group is not attached directly to the ring, it's attached to the side group. And so we have here our carbonyl carbon, it has a hydrogen in one other group, and that other group happens to include a ring. Okay. So these are ketone here on the left that we were given in the problem. This would be an aldehyde. And we could also have a an ketone that looks similar to this. It doesn't have to be part of the ring. So if we had this kind of shape where we got another carbon over here, or CH3 group, this would also be a ketone because it has a carbonyl carbon here with two other carbons attached to it. And so this would be ketone, ketone, and aldehyde.